Good evening, I'm Sandy Toxvig and this is What the Dickens, a show that looks at culture from every corner of the world. Uh, well, except of course Australia. Uh, oh, and the Isle of Man. Uh, but to be honest, we haven't got much from Guildford either. Uh, on tonight's show, Chris Addison is joined by a comedian who runs a comedy club where comics are encouraged to perform new and experimental material. Well, new if it gets a laugh, experimental if it doesn't. <laughs> uh, please welcome, after that experimental introduction, Robin Ince. And on Sue Perkins' team, a comedian who is frequently described as petite, though don't say that in her presence or she'll punch you in the knee. The chances of me doing a short gag about somebody else. <laughs> so very welcome. Please welcome Lucy Porter. The first round is Three Steps to Heaven. Both teams are given three photos, each of which will give them a clue to a famous film, book, play or musical. Three points will be given to them if they can work out what it is from the first impossible picture, two points if they get it on the slightly less impossible picture, and a single point if they can get it on the third picture, which is, well, it's normally a dead giveaway. Uh, so, Chris and Robin, you're up first. Here is your first clue. Oh, oh. it's Wayne Rooney's latest passport photo. <laughs> it's a mash, isn't it? It's, <laughs> just, that's it, yeah. Just, <laughs> The, Excellent. I like that's that. three points. That's three yeah. points, straight away. Um, I want you to think of, what can I tell you, a different name for potatoes. Spuds. Spuds, yes. Is uh, it the Jersey Royal Family, uh, <laughs> in which John Nettles plays the part of Ricky Tomlinson? It's very, very exciting. They have the same nose. Um, murder my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look at the second picture clue? Uh, that, as everybody knows, is the Velvet Underground. <laughs> Uh, an early beat combo. Has that helped you get any closer? Hang on, so it's, it's, a, so it's a different name for potatoes. Uh, mash. Spud. I'm giving you spud. I'm not spud. giving you mash, I'm spud. giving you spud. Spud. Who is oh, hang on. Who, who, yeah, it's a character called Spud. OK, yeah, I'm going to move on look, to the oh, final she. picture clue. Oh, it's... it's, it's which is, it's, of it's course... It's train spotting. Spud it is waiting for The answer is train spotting. Very, very, very good. good. Well, very yeah. good. The answer is train spotting. The character of Daniel Murphy is known as Spud, hence the potatoes. The Velvet Underground recorded a song called Heroin, uh, which is, of course, the drug to which many of the story's characters are addicted, and the action takes place in Edinburgh, uh, which was illustrated by a picture of Edinburgh. Uh, so one point to Chris and Robin. Uh. never have got that train spotting. We're two little Spots. kind of middle class boys who going, I do hope it's going to be Bright Head revisited again. <laughs> I know all the evil in war books, but I didn't even understand train spotting. Was it Scottish? Was it Esperanto? Well, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it, it's a curious thing you should it, ask that. Why was the first 20 minutes of the film Train Spotting re edited for the American release? They didn't get it, they didn't understand it. They, it, it, they, it was felt that American audiences would struggle to understand the Scottish accent. <laughs> uh, people think Train Spotting is an odd title, but I think it makes sense because the only way I'd ever take up Train Spotting is on heroin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Sue and Lucy, you're up next, and here is your very first clue. Oh, Lord. Oh. Is that the Ocado men checking the delivery for John Prescott is in order? <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty horrible looking, isn't it? It's, uh, it's meat, uh... It's carcass, it's abattoir. Is it abagold? Let's have a look at our second picture. That is the Apollo spacecraft in a picture I... I think taken by a very brave and presumably fire resistant photographer. <laughs> uh, has that helped? So, what? Let's Could it be a sort of meat, meat rocket? I think I did see a film <laughs> called that one. Oh. <laughs> Late night film, The Meat Rocket. Um, <laughs> yes. Inadvertently, you've said something helpful to yourselves. OK, let me, let me see what's, 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 what's two, working. Look at the two of them together. We have got a meat freezer and we have got. What is the name of the space program? Uh, it's Apollo. 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 Okay. Apollo Creed Rocky. Oh. Yes. No way. <gasps> yes, the answer is Rocky. 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 Absolutely Curses. right. <laughs> oh, he's got some partnerships. He's yes. so much yes. stand. Uh, let's have a look at the final picture and see if that would have helped you. That is yes. uh, the <laughs> Philadelphia <laughs> Museum of Art. 
He runs up and down them. Yeah, the answer is Rocky. A meat freezer is one of the unusual training venues utilised by Rocky in the film. Apollo is both an American space rocket, but it's also the name of Rocky's opponent, Apollo Creed. And Rocky runs up the steps leading to the Philadelphia Art Museum in one of the film's most memorable scenes. So two points to the girls. Okay, this is absolutely true. What was the result of Stallone punching the meat so hard and for so long in the fact that he beautifully tender when they finally cooked it? <laughs> <laughs> he got BSE of the knuckles. <laughs> kind of. His knuckles are now flat. That's a really bizarre thing to hit meat that hard that you've got flat knuckles. Did you know that in the Tour de France, I don't think they do this anymore. Uh, what they used to do is in the morning they'd buy themselves a really juicy piece of meat and they would put it down their cycling shorts and they would cycle, you know, up and down mountains and apparently tender is anything in the evening. <laughs> oh, what, no. the you don't have to share it with anyone. The... No, no, no. That is Nobody the wants to eat it. Sandy, which piece of meat was tenderised? <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> it's not my specialist area. Um... In the early days of... <laughs> France, I was streaming just loads of all the dogs of France just chasing <laughs> the bicycles. <laughs> uh, Rocky is my favourite sports film, uh, mainly because it's just the right length for a good nap. <laughs> Uh, the next round is called Love It or Loathe It. We ask our guests to choose something from the world of the arts which they will claim to both love and loathe. The opposing team will question them and must then decide whether that person does in fact love or loathe their chosen subject. So, Robin, you're going to go first. What have you chosen as your subject? Uh, I've chosen Charles Dickens. Wonderful. Now, are you going to love him or loathe him to begin with? <laughs> um, I think I might loathe him to begin with. Going to loathe him to begin with. OK, you have got uh, one minute to do so. Oh, Mr Pompelchook, your thumb's in the figgy pudding again! <laughs> Laughed the great big fat idiot with the sideboards again. I'm just a little poor boy who's not been very well. Don't worry, it'll work out quite well for you at the end of all this. But some of your friends will die from leprosy or rickets, I imagine. <laughs> Overall, there will be a good message, but much sadness as well. And it will give us some distance to be able to look at it every now and again and go, Oh, it was so much better in the 19th century, said the member of the Tory administration, forgetting about the disease and death. Uh, so, also, it's an excuse for the BBC to go, well, we can churn out lots and lots of rubbish for quite a while, but once every seven years, we'll take out John Mills again, alive or dead, and place him <laughs> on a podium to play one of the lead characters in a Dickens novel. And we go, oh, the BBC still got it. They're still doing things with kind of lovely lacy things in them as well. And some of our lovely actresses looking young, and some of our older actresses <laughs> looking very fat, playing hilarious chefs and drinking hot soup. Oh, oh. isn't it a dandy world? <laughs> Uh, I believe him that he learns it, uh, if I'm honest with you. Have you got a question? Yeah, there was, there was, um, yes. When did you <laughs> stop taking the Ritalin? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Do you know the amount of Ritalin I've had just to get to this level? He's rattling yeah, with Ritalin. I read the Daily Express again today. Yeah. Well, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, it's time for you to totally contradict yourself. Um. And I need a minute on you loving Dickens, please. Why do I love Charles Dickens? Now, this is going to seem like such a, a terrible uh, reason to actually like him, but I love Charles Dickens because of Alistair Sim. When I was uh, probably seven or eight years old, I sat down uh, with my dad and we watched Scrooge for the first time, and that got me to reading A Christmas Carol. And from there on, I went into the longer work. Some of them, I'd, I have to admit, Bleak House, a little bit too long. <gasps> it's uh, my favourite. It curses on you. I love that book. <laughs> I find it just about long enough for a nap. Hang on, you can't do that reading, can you? <laughs> Never mind, strike that joke. So, so, um, so really, this is what it's, it's a childhood. It's, it's for me a nostalgia thing. It takes me back to my childhood and to the fact that that's what sitting around watching Scrooge, watching Alice Sim, and seeing the beautiful humanity that exists in Dickens. Uh, does he love Dickens or does he loathe Dickens? You now have to put your money where your mouth is. I sort of feel there was more personal honesty about your liking it, and I could get suckered into an evil trap. Yeah, no, I disagree. I uh, will say, yeah. in deference to Lucy, that actually, although he likes the work of Alice the Sim and loves Alice the Sim, he and finds the books a bore and loathes them. Yes, yes. I think okay. you find You think that you loathe Dickens? Sally Field, Steel Magnolias. <laughs> loathe. <laughs> oh, well yeah. done, you. Well done, guys. When Charles Dickens was 12 years old, his father was arrested for debt and the family was forced to send young Charles to work in the harsh, grim conditions of a shoe polish factory. Get ready. Luckily, he took a shine to it. <laughs> oh, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Take the rest of the day off. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know. I know. I feel my work here is done.
OK, Lucy, uh, it's now your turn to love or loathe something. <laughs> what have you chosen? I have chosen the ballet. Oh, the ballet. The ballet. And uh, would you like to love or to loathe the ballet? I will be loving the ballet. Are you going to be giving it as a dance or are you going to be speaking? It, well, I mean, uh, the ballet, it, uh, one dance can do the work of a million words. Oh, started with the love. Start with the love. Mm -hmm. Give me the love for the ballet. Girl. I love the ballet. Well, I absolutely adore ballet because I just think, what other night out can you have where you have sort of poetry, strength, just gorgeousness, and also there is every chance you're going to see the sort of lycra clad outline of a man's knobber. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's a beautiful poetic art form. It's, I mean, I was hooked when I saw the red shoes, like a lot of girls. Mm. And, you know, as a child, I saw the red shoes and thought, That's, I want to dance, I must dance, I tell you, I must dance. And Although, to be fair, when I did watch E.T., I thought, I must be an alien now. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and when I saw Rocky, I started to punch me. Anyway, but, um, yeah, I just always wanted to be a ballerina, because I have the diminutive stature, mm. obviously, I'm sure you dabbled as well. <laughs> I went to Mrs Miller's... We're still talking about the ballet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, yeah, my weak ankles let me down, as with so oh. much in life. But uh, but no, I've always just adored the ballet uh, oh. since I've been a child. So um, you can't get me out of sad as well. Quick question about the ballet and her love for it. Just What's the last one you went to see, Luce? The last one well, I went to see, the Nutcracker. Which at production Christmas. they are? It was the Matthew Bourne production of the Nutcracker. I see. That's about seven years you ago. You went to see Elvis the ballet, like the Shelfus ballet at Sadler's Wells. What an interesting audience that was. It was half <laughs> people in cravats and dressed most delicately, other you know, Hawaiian shirted men. And it was absolutely marvellous. <laughs> it's um, extraordinary how graceful dying on the toilet can be made. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, please, can we have the opposing viewpoint? Okay. And I need you to loathe the ballet. Well, of course, I loathe the ballet. What right thinking person would watch it? It's dull. It's stupid. It's gonna be, if you've got a story to tell, then write it down. You can't <laughs> dance. There's nothing you can convey. I mean, there are good dances, things like the Birdie Song and the Lombarda. Right? <laughs> they, they tell a story. Yeah. You know, black and the laces story is and I've had a bit to drink. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm at a wedding. Of alcoholic descent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just don't. I, I've just never got the point of it, and I'm sure that they're very sort of trained professionals. But because it's, it's also, it's not like classical ballet is just the same thing all the time. It's just someone. Oh, I'm very pretty. Lovely lovely lady floating around, but actually you just go, no, you've got feet that are as gnarled as Gordon Ramsay's face. Don't try and sell us on that. Quick question. Is there any other form of dancing that doesn't involve drink that you do love? <laughs> no, pretty much. I think the two are inseparable. Uh, right, you're going to have to make a decision now. Does she love or loathe the ballet? Uh, well, it was really difficult because I actually think, ultimately, you don't really give a jot about the ballet. Because uh. both of your answers, it was... Uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Robert Helpman for various reasons. Because he used like to Robert kidnap Helpman? children, mate. Well, no, no, it, Robert Helpman played the child catcher. Some friends of his saw the child catcher mm, and rang him up great. and said, I'm sorry about it, it's brilliant. Uh, they rang him up and they went, we're really worried you're coming around for dinner on Tuesday. And uh, our kids just saw you in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, they were terrified. Could you have a word with them on the phone? He went, of course, that'll be fine. When they got to the phone, he went, I'm coming to get you, children! <laughs> <laughs> I think Lucy probably loves ballet. That's the sense that I get, although she's a cussed type. I agree with you. I think it's love. I think it's love. Love! We're going for love! Please reveal whether you love or loathe the ballet. Look at her smiling. Oh, is that so? <laughs> oh, good girl! Oh, well done! Lucy, Very good! Dancing! Oh, this, is this is absolutely true. I took all three of my children. Uh, we were given as a gift oh. uh, the royal box at the Colosseum to see the Nutcracker. And uh, my son was uh, three, and, uh, the, and the girls must have been kind of seven and five. And along we went, and the lights went down, and the first lot of dancers came on. My son was sitting on my lap, and he'd got his dummy in his mouth. And he was, so, like this, and then the first scene finished, and the lights went up again, and more ballet dancers came on. And he said loud enough for the entire theatre to hear. He pulled his dummy out and went, Oh, now what? <laughs> <laughs> he and I spent the rest of the ballet playing tag in the corridor. <laughs> It's time for a break now, and I'm going to teach Lucy where she's gone wrong with her plie. Uh, while we're away, here is a question for you at home. What sport is ballet thought to be derived from? We'll be back with the answer in just a moment. Welcome back to What the Dickens Before the Break. I asked, what sport is ballet thought to be derived from? Caber tossing. Caber tossing, <laughs> yes. Oh, dwarf I, I tossing. I think I do actually know what it is. Yes, what is it? It is fencing. Oh, very oh, good. Yes, absolutely. Yes, 
absolutely right. Is there anything I know about fencing. ballet? It's fencing. That is where ballet came from. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> It would be a lot better if when one ballet, one, uh, ballet dancer touched another, you got an ah, eh, and they had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> and they had Start the visors on. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next round is called Common People. Each team will be given three pictures of people, all of whom are connected to the arts in some way. But they also have something else in common, and our team's task is to work out what. So, Chris and Robin, here are your three. Right. Stephen Fry. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar Wilde. <laughs> Oscar Wilde. Who's the one in the middle? Do we know? That Dylan is Thomas. Tim Thomas. Dylan Thomas and... Marilyn Monroe. They all died Marin of drink. Mon no, that is not correct. They didn't all die of drink. They uh, did all die. I what can tell you that they're connected by some form of artwork. They're connected by a form of... A picture, a portrait. A, a picture, picture touring Dorian picture. Gray. A portrait. They've all had their portrait painted... They've all appeared in exactly the same place in a piece of art. They're all on the cover they of Sergeant oh, yeah, Pepper. Yeah. They are all oh. on the cover of Sergeant Pepper's yeah, Lonely Hearts uh, Club Frost. band. Yeah. Every one of them. Are we going over the yeah. All three of them did, in fact, appear on the album cover for Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. So you get two points, and boy, could you do with them. Well done. Um, <laughs> Uh, near the end of his career, Oscar Wilde was sent to Reading Jail for having a gay love affair, a punishment which, to the civilised mind, is frankly horrendous. I mean, Reading. <laughs> <laughs> Sue and Lucy, here are your three common people. Ah. <gasps> <gasps> Matt Damon. Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon, Nicholas Lindhurst and Monica Corbett. They've all been in Only Fools and Horses. All I friends. love the fact that uh, they've got almost all of Ronnie Corbett in that <laughs> shot. <laughs> and that's a real size. <laughs> do you know, he's picture. my ideal dance partner, isn't he? He is. If I ever do the ballet, it shall be... With pas de deux with uh, pas de deux with Ronnie. I once played, uh, played golf with Ronnie. And uh, it was just the two of us. It wasn't sort of... It's taken big... ages. <laughs> well, we, he was the sweetest thing, and we were out on the course, and we, he, he was, he's such a nice man, and it was just the two of us, and we were chatting away, and he suddenly said to me, he said, I was just thinking, we must look like a condiment set. <laughs> <laughs> You, me, and Ronnie Corbett oh. could get into the movies by standing on each other's shoulders and putting on a big coat. That's fantastic. Yeah. You, me, and Ronnie, that's a whole crew it, darling. That's fantastic. <laughs> Is it they've all got like a sixth toe? Uh, no. It's, a, it's, it's a, a hobby. hobby. It's, it's a, a hobby. Time. It's, it's not golf related. It's not golf related. It's do they do they fly? They've got pilot's license. It has to do with flying. <gasps> ah, very good. They own their own planes. They no, I'm going to pass it. Oh, 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 we're so oh, close. They're oh, like oh, helicopters. Please. They want through a Harrier jump jet. They it race. has nothing it's to do planes. with Model mechanical planes. flying. They, oh. those they have wings. Matt Damon and Nicholas Cage. They don't do the wings. They don't do the flying. They don't do the flying. They don't do the flying. Are they all known acres? Help us! It's such a scary Hang on, hang on. They're birds of prey. What did you say, Robin? Do they all own apiaries? Are they all uh, keen honey lovers who uh, uh, are lovers of bees? They as well? are all beekeepers. Oh. Absolutely right. Oh. 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 Did you know that? All three are, in fact, beekeepers, and Matt Damon is an honorary member of the British Beekeepers Association. So, well done, boys. You get, because it was handed over to you, you get an extra point that you dearly need, frankly. Ronnie Corbett remains a very keen beekeeper, even after that unfortunate incident last summer, uh, when one of his queens swooped down and carried him off for a couple of miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Chris and Robin have reached back with four points, and Sue Super and Lucy working. still have got six. <laughs> right, on to the final round, losing the plot. The team captains have 90 seconds to describe the plot of a work of literature, film or song to their teammates without mentioning people, any names or places. No. Giving any clues to the title. 
Uh, now, Sue and Lucy are in the lead, so you're going to go first. Oh, Have you got your list, Susan? The pressure, my darling. Open your yeah. This is real pressure, because this, this audience are all very clever. Um, it's OK, we're just going to go for it, Lucy. We're going we're gonna to channel. Your 90 seconds start now. West End musical um, uh, about Cats. siblings. Um, Love Brothers. Them. Yes. Um, oh, there's a dozen of them in a jury. They're furious. Oh, um, they're uh, 12 angry men. Um, same fellows now, but uh, there are fewer of them. Four fewer than that. Uh, it might be about <laughs> baseball. Um, four fewer than a dozen. Eight. And they're all <laughs> fellows God, together. That. Eight uh, men in the baseball. No, they're not in. They're <laughs> eight out. Eight about. Out of eight. Eight, eight so men the, out. The, yes, exactly. Eight so, men out. Um, oh, look, uh, it's a fantastic uh, spy, a thriller. Um, and uh, it's basically centred... Uh, it, it's, it's, the, the Is this still eight men out? No, oh, we've done that one. Oh, That's okay. all good. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> warring forces. Oh, um, hang on. Uh, in the countryside, and there are some flights of things to get up, and there's quite a few of them. Steps of 39 steps. Indeed. Um, <laughs> oh, drugs, sex, set on a campus. Um, <laughs> Transatlantic novel. Uh, oh, it's um, the secret, uh, the, the secret thing. D John imagine Tart. Is it imagine Tart? eight less than eight. Um, um, in, it's, I've said the title is less than zero. Oh, oh, I've got, no. oh, I've got fangs. I have. Would you like to have a conversation with me? It might bite you. This is a novel. Um, uh, but if we were having Jack a conversation, uh, talking to Dracula thingy. Uh, I know what it is. It's a generic. It's, uh, it's a generic. No. <laughs> if I've got fangs, and I might bite you. Have a conversation with the vampire. But not a conversation. So like it's a job. I'm going for a job. Vampire. What skills do you have? I've got fangs. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. Um, he's a poor man. It's a classic, a classic novel of this country. Willy Wonka. Um, on the top. Uh, <laughs> it's written, it's written by a woman, but she's got a man's name. Uh, it's George not her Eliot. Most, yes, it's not her most Silas famous Marner. book. Yes, it is Silas Marner, a seminal transatlantic <laughs> novel. Oh, okay. Well done. So, boys, they've got twelve points. You need to get nine correct. Oh, I can't stand the tension at this point. Uh, in order to win your chance to score starts now. Right. <clears throat> OK, um, uh, the first rule of this thing is not to talk about this Fight thing. Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not west, it's not west of the... North by uh, Northwest. No, no, uh, no, it's... Uh, east it's, of Krakatoa. Uh, it's Krakatoa, east no, of Java. It, it, no, you were close, <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, of somewhere else. Uh, it's uh, where Adam and Eve were. You would find them in oh, the Garden uh, East of Eden. Sorry, that's yeah. right. Yes, and you just mentioned this film uh, in which a very famous uh, sequence involves uh, a North by Northwest. That's the one. This is ridiculous. Uh, this is set in uh, the north of uh, the, the north of the country. It's uh, an Asian family. It's another direction thing. The direction um, <sighs> equals the direction. If you see what I mean. Oh, right. East is east. That's the fella. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this also has a direction in the title. It's a cartoon. <laughs> it's a big law. Uh, oh, oh, that's in the. I hate compasses! This is the worst round I've ever had! Alright, alright, this is about dinosaurs, right? Dinosaurs have been brought Jurassic back to life. That's the one, but uh, and this is from. Uh, East of Jurassic Park! <laughs> <laughs> Several years earlier, one of those creatures has somehow been uh, misplaced in some Oh, way. my favourite little Tyrannosaurus that lived in the West! That's the one. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, a single number of these sorts of creatures has disappeared. One of my dinosaurs <laughs> is living in Harvard! <laughs> it is... We can't win. Who cares? Keep going. <laughs> all right. Okay. All, right. Uh, all right. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't seen each other for ages. Oh, come on, guys. Right. 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 Oh. Oh. What were the others? What were the others? At the end of the game, Chris and Robin have finished with nine points, but the winner this time are Sue and Lucy with 12 points. <laughs> Dickens, I've been Sandy Talks Week, and I'm off now to curl up with a good book. It annoys the staff with the late night waterstones, but it's cheaper than buying things. <laughs> good night. The American imperialists examined through the eyes of Russian animators. Soviet animated propaganda tomorrow night at half eight here on Sky Arts One. And next tonight, we look at the dawn of rock and roll and the legacy of Sun Records. <laughs>